Hi everyone and welcome to Asamu Rat Care. So today's um, video is going to be looking at um, a new base mix that I found and I want to talk a little bit about um, kind of I'll give it a basic review but also how I've picked it as well because I think that'll be quite useful for people that are going out there and picking base mixes. Um, but effectively for a while I've been looking for a new base mix because Harrison's Banana Brunch, while it's been very useful, it's barley based, um, it's about 14% protein, um, it's got a nice range of different kind of, um, well, like, like peas, etc. in different grains in and so on. Um, and it also is very low alfalfa, in fact there's no alfalfa kind of grassy stuff in there which is dead handy. Um, it's also very low in copper, um, very very low, and um, particularly because um, I do keep black rats and such, they tend to rust a bit. If you want to know more about that, if you want to look at the conditioning video that I've got, the um, coat condition video that was um, a while ago now, but it should be on there, or there's a playlist on my site which um, has a condition link on there. But yes, so um, the copper was the main thing, but also the fat is very low in banana brunch as well, and my rats do do better on a bit higher fat. I tend to operate my mix at around about 6-7%. I would say if you've got a rat rats kept in the house you're probably more interested about five percent ish um, banana brunch is lower than that this is slightly higher than that um, and that's partly why i like it so this is what it looks like it comes in 20 kilogram bag um, which will mean when i'm moving it around it's going to be a little bit awkward um, harrison's banana brunch was in 15 kilograms and it costs about um, 13 to 14 pounds depending where you get it from if you get it locally you can also get it online at milbury hill um, but it's well worth checking out the stockists that on the Red Mills website there's a list of stockists there and usually if you have a ring around somebody can order it in for you and um, that's what we've done that's how we've got hold of this um, right so let's have a quick look at the back now, I doubt very much you're going to be able to read this but what I will do is I'll take a photo up close and I'll stick it in the corner here and um, so you can have a closer look but one of the things I'm looking for when I'm looking for a new mix, um, I straight away look at um, what I would call the macronutrients, the really key big nutrients. Um, so that for me is protein. Um, for a rat mix, you want it to be around about 12 to 14 percent protein, I would say, as a base. Um, if you're getting up to the 16s, 18s, that's a bit high, to be honest. Um, uh, unless you're kind of talking about rats that are, are kind of pregnant and nursing, that's too high. Um, a little bit lower is handy because you can just up the protein by adding more into that, but 14% is fine. And I've been using something like at this level for a while. Um, it gets on quite well. They do need a bit of protein to kind of grow into big muscly rats. Um, next thing on there is um, fibre. So the fibre on this is 5%. Now fibre with rats, they need some fibre. Um, what you find that some people say is things like alfalfa um, is toxic for rats, which it definitely isn't. It's just fibre. Um, same with grass-based stuff. But the thing is, you don't want that to be too high um, because they, then their digestive system isn't set up to get the most from it. Um, if they get high fibre food, what they have to do is effectively um, pass it out in dropping form and then they'll eat those droppings to recover it. And, and that does let them get more of the nutrition out, but it's not as efficient as, say, a, a cow with lots of stomachs. Um, that's actually how rabbits function a lot because they rely on high fibre food to do well and they have to eat quite a bit of their droppings to do that. Um, but they are more set up for it than rats. Um, so fibre in itself, you don't want it to be stupidly high, you don't want it to be too low, they need some fibre in that diet. Um, that is very much driven usually by the amount of grassy stuff in there. So next thing on here, which is more interesting to me, is oils and fats. So oils and fats, you want at least 5% in a rat diet. Um, really you're looking 6, 7, potentially even a little higher than that, depending on what time of the year it is, how you're actually doing and so on. This is at 8%, which is quite high. Um, I'm quite happy with that because I feel that my rats will do fine with that. Contrary to what a lot of people say, high fat does not mean that rats are going to get fat on it. Um, it's one of these kind of myths that's also spread around in humans as well. Fat in itself does not cause obesity. Too much calories do. Yes, fat, fatty foods do contain slightly more calories, but actually if you just feed them slightly less of that, it's fine. So you shouldn't worry overly about quite high fat. Um, you just don't want it to be ridiculous and you don't want to feed them too much just because of the calorie content. So I'm quite happy with that 8% of fat. Um, I will say that if you're using this in a kind of indoor environment, you want, might want to add like less seeds than I would relatively to a normal mix with, with um, it because 8% is quite high. You don't need to boost that, that fat any higher. Whereas when we're using banana brunch, I actually added about double the amount of seeds I would add to a normal base because it was so low fat and I need to push it up for my rats. Right, so once we looked at um, 
oils and fat. That's probably really protein and fat are the kind of two things that I really look heavily at. Then you get kind of more the, um, what we call micronutrients. So these are like the vitamins and minerals. Um, there is various different levels on there. The thing that um, interests me particularly is the copper level. So copper is needs to be about 10 milligrams per kilogram in a rat diet um, for them to get as much as they need. Some need a little bit more, some probably need a little bit less than that. Um, and they also don't necessarily process everything. Now, um, banana brunch was at five milligrams per kilogram, so it's half what they needed, which is why we add things like um, conditioning pellets or um, copper, uh, sorry, um, barley rings to a mix that contain a banana brunch. This sits at 60 milligrams per kilogram. That means we don't have to worry about copper if we feed this as a kind of a good chunk of the mix. In fact, if you think about it, if you've got a, a mix that is half this and half something else, even that's, if that something else has zero copper in it, it will still be at least 30 milligrams per kilogram. And that's where something like this is very useful. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, other things that are interested, it's got a nice amount of vitamin D3 added. Vitamin D is very important to rats. Um, if you're feeding a straight space diet, which my, my diet is half straight space and half commercially <laughs> mixed space, um, it will be low in vitamin D, so it's nice to see a decent amount of vitamin D there. And having a look around at an awful lot of food, 2000 IU is one of the higher end of stuff. Usually you're getting around about 500 to 1000 kind of IUs of vitamin D. So that is good to know. Um, so those are the main things in terms of the kind of nutrition bit on the mix. Then what I also then look at is the composition. So what I'm looking with the composition is the ingredients. It's another name for that. Um, here we've got straight away barley flakes as the first item on there. Now I like a mix that is um, relies on barley as its main grain or one, uh, something else like uh, seed pea flaked ones are okay. I'd love it if they made a rice <laughs> rice based one but sadly that doesn't tend to happen so much in the UK. Um, but barley is a nice low phosphorus grain which means that I can comfortably use this through a rat's life without worrying too much on that. So next thing on there is maize. Um, maize flakes steam cooked quite important to note particularly for um, some of our kind of people that have read a lot on the American sites um, people are often nervous of maize because in if maize is dried in, dried in a particularly bad way and um, it can generate kind of spores of mold and can be quite toxic now the fact this is maize is steam cooked is quite normal actually in the UK and um, these are the flaked mazes as well basically glorified cornflakes um, that means that it's it's not going to be harbouring that mould. In fact, generally speaking, in the UK, we don't have to worry too much about that because our maize tends to be dried in a different way. But this is, isn't even dried, it's cooked. So it's very, very safe from that point of view. Again, it's a low phosphorus grain. It's something that's perfectly fine for rats to have. Um, I've, I've seen some people say, oh, maize cause cancer. Um, there has been studies on rats fed entirely on maize, something which is not a healthy diet. It does not contain nearly a, a, enough nutrients for them. Um, then it does tend to increase the rates of cancer slightly, but I'm surprised those rats are still alive because maize is actually a very low um, kind of protein and fat grain and um, not something I would want to feed rats on long term because they would get quite sick on it <laughs> anyway. So it's fine in small amounts, like most things in life. For instance, celery but, um, can cause cancer. <laughs> I think tomatoes can both cause cancer and reduce the risks of cancer <laughs> again you'd have to have the diet entirely filled with them to get these kind of effects so bear a bit of kind of in mind a bit of common sense on these things right so next on there we have um, wheat flakes so wheat is one of the higher phosphorus gains but we're talking now third down in the list and that's kind of something that I'm okay with um, it was fairly low percentage wheat in itself is not awful and um, I prefer flaked wheat to kind of the whole wheat because more of the bran, which is the thing that contains most of the phosphorus, will be destroyed, so that's quite handy. Um, then we get molasses, or cane molasses in this case. Molasses is a kind of sugary substance, which is added to food to add a bit of energy, easy energy. This is a conditioning mix designed for horses, so this is to kind of put muscle and fat and weight on them and shine on the coats, so this is easy available energy for them. Now, in, I would probably prefer it not to be on there, apart from in winter when it's actually going to be very handy because it will help them keep condition when it's quite cool in the, in the um, rat room. Um, but to be honest, it's not too bad and the sugar content and the overall mix is not ridiculously high, so I'm okay with it. Um, as with anything, nothing is perfect, um, but I'm quite fine with that and I suspect the rats are quite enjoying it. Um, they're not getting the banana chips that are in banana brunch, even though I picked half of those on. And actually banana brunch was sprayed with a banana flavoured thing, which was probably quite high in sugar. So I don't think they're going to be any worse off on that. 
um, so it should be fine really and will we'll be handy in winter for my and um, it might be what you need to think about a little bit again if your rats are indoors and um, you might need to feed slightly less because again it's full of kind of extra energy this mix right so what else have we got there soya bean hulls so this says that the protein content in here is from soya soya is quite handy um, in terms of being kind to the kidneys um, so it's something that um, I'm quite happy to have as my protein source. Some people are a bit twitchy about it because of GM modified soya. Now this doesn't say, state that it's GM modified or that it's not, um, but I'm okay with that. It's kind of a personal choice on that. So then it also goes on to soya oil. So that means the fat content of this mix is provided by soya. Um, again, it's not an oil that I have a problem with. I prefer to see linseed oil or something like that. I really like linseeds um, or hemp oil. But they're, to be honest, not that common. You tend to see them more in dog foods and then it's sold as flat soil, um, which is basically linseed. Um, but soy oil is fine. It's not going to cause major problems. What I don't like to see is things like poultry fat or um, unnamed meat fat <laughs> um, of some description. So that's kind of absolutely fine for them. Um, so next, soybean flakes. So there's another bit of um, kind of soya in there. Um, again, for the protein content. Um, then we've got some whole wheat, um, some sunflower seed meal, which is also helping boost up the fat content. Um, sunflower seeds, you can get some rats that have a little bit of a problem as that as a source of protein. But bear in mind, we're now kind of right down here on the mix of ingredients. Um, the lower something is down on the mix of ingredients, the um, less there is in the mix, which is um, quite useful to kind of bear in mind. So we're talking a very small amount now of this sunflower seed meal. So again, I would rather see something like linseed or hemp or pumpkin seed in there. But in reality for a horse food, that's absolutely fine. And it's not gonna cause problems. If I have any rats that don't get on with it, I'll switch it to something else. It's um, easily done. Right, so then we're getting on to, um, we've got wheat feed. Wheat feed is a word which basically means a form of strawy hay type stuff. It's high fiber very low down. I would worry too, more if that was like the first or second ingredient because that means it's mostly grassy stuff, um, which again isn't going to hurt them, but it's also going to mean that they're going to have more challenges digesting it. Um, but yes, so wheat feed being low down, absolutely fine. Adds a bit of fibre to the diet, it's not a bad thing. And then we're getting on to the vitamins and minerals. Um, so we've got calcium carbonate, which adds the calcium. They've added something about phosphorus. They've added some sodium chloride or salt. Um, there isn't a high levels of salt in this, but any animal does need a little bit of salt in the diet. And actually, um, animals that are mostly grain fed may not actually get a lot into the diet. And um, yeah, some magnesium, etc. So that basically kind of covers everything. And actually, if I have a quick look on that, they do say that this is made from GM modified grains. Now, I personally don't have a problem with GM. Um, I know some people do and some people think um, it's playing Frankenstein with grains. I'm not going to get into that, but the science at the moment doesn't suggest that there's any problems. Um, so I'm happy to feed my rats that. So that's what's in the mix. Um, we'll have a quick look into it. I'll get you some out so you can see what it's like. I haven't opened this yet, so though I have seen a few pictures from people that I've talked to getting this online. So um, it should be quite interesting. Got a little scoop. Right, so here we are. So first thing I can tell you, this smells absolutely lovely. Um, just really, I don't know, tasty. <laughs> it's quite grainy and tasty. So we've got, I'll put this in a bit of a bigger one actually, you might be able to see it easier. Um, so you can see here that it's, it's quite kind of like orangey colour. That is the molasses. Um, there's a nice mixture of grains. I've got to use my hands. I have hands for a reason. It's a nice mix of grains there. We can see soya flakes, we can see barley flakes, and these little pellets will be some of the kind of probably a little bit of the wheat mixed in with some of the soya stuff and so on. Um, it smells really nice. Um, it's not kind of the most interesting looking thing in the world. It hasn't got a lot of brightly coloured elements. Now that's not a bad thing. What you do find with a lot of rabbit foods is they have a lot of artificial colours, um, which is Mostly to sell it to the owners, the, the rats don't look at the colour of the thing before eating it. This says it's a, quite a bit more um, kind of natural. I do really like the smell of that. So yes, so this is um, what we've got. I'm, what, how I'm going to use this is I'm going to, right now I've got a load of um, 
rat food mixed up. Um, and I want to add some of this straight away because I think it'd be quite good for them. Um, the copper content will be dead handy. So I'm going to mix this probably about 50-50 with my current mix and see how they get on with it. And then what I will do um, going forward is I'm going to replace the banana brunch in my mix with this. Um, I might still occasionally get some banana brunch in and just chuck a bit in, but this is going to be my major commercial mix. So if you're talking about my simple mix, I would use this to replace the banana brunch entirely and that's absolutely fine if you can get hold of it. Um, I think rat rations are going to look to try and get in some of this because um, I've raved about it a little bit. Um, and in my kind of complex mix, again, I make up um, one half of my complex mixes out of commercial mixes. So I'm going to use mostly this and then, like I have done in the past, a few assorted other bits and pieces, just because um, I find that interesting and I think it gives a bit of variety to the rats. But I'm, I'm going to mostly use this. Um, so I think that's probably it for me. I'm, I'm looking forward to see what the rats make of it. Um, uh, we'll see whether we can um, offer them a handful maybe and give it a video so you can see whether they dive on it straight away or turn their nose off at it. Um, but at the moment I'm quite liking the smell. I could kind of sit here. It smells very um, slightly sweet, which is the molasses, but kind of slightly cakey. <laughs> um, I think that'll go down very well. So um, bye from me for now and we shall see what the girls think. Now at the moment, it's going down quite well. <laughs> hey Burko, you're missing out. Wait, that's my fingers. They're getting quite excited. Oh no, no, that's... Ah. Yes, um, I'm nearly losing a finger. Yeah, no, that's that ah, is actually my finger. Come on, Tato, just take the food. <laughs> yeah, so far I can say that this is a rather large hit. Are you coming up to get it? It's up there, silly rat. <laughs> right, come on, I'm putting that down there before I lose a finger. Um, yes, they really, really, really like it, just plain. And actually, um, other than I, I would prefer to dilute the um, fat a little bit, um, I would say that this is um, this could almost be fed as a kind of ready-made mix. I'd like a little bit more variety in it, um, like some vegetables and dry veg and such in it. But it, it's really not bad in its own right. And as you can see, they absolutely adore it. Um, it's really nice to see. So I think this is going to make quite a good addition to my... Uh, mix and it will be very popular with them so we'll see how they get on and 